I started with the Ben Eater 6502 kit. This started a journey to getting Loadrunner working on my own computer. My quest continues and I've set my sights on Ultima 4. This video documents a waypoint in my progress on that journey. In my last video I designed logic to mimic the Apple II soft switches and ROM banking. I designed and tested the logic in Logisim and then drafted it up into KiCad schematics. I then followed that schematic and implemented the design on breadboards. Initially I was using a 22v10 PLD but with all the changes, it was a little too much. I thought it would be fun to implement in 74 series logic, so that's what I did. I stood up the soft switch, banking logic, and device selection logic side by side with the rest of the project. I built an Arduino test harness to test the soft switches and banking logic. This was pretty handy for building confidence that the logic was working, roughly. The harness drove the address lines, the videnable, vidbus, readwrite, phi2 signals, and would read which chip was selected, ROM, RAM, or device, given an address, a read, or a write. You can see the tests running here. Next step was integrating with the main computer. This is a video I took right before I started the integration. Okay, I'm about to do the integration of the soft switches with the rest of the machine, and I'm super nervous because there's just so many changes. It might be a while before I get back to this. So, cross my fingers. Hope it works. One eternity later. Okay, here we go with everything wired up. Shit. Hang in. There we go. Those are the Apple soft switches. Ah, oh, shoot. After many hours of debugging using the Arduino, oscilloscope, multimeter, logic analyzer, and lots of trial and error. Here it is working. Okay, so here's the current status. I'm going to consider the graphics to be complete for now. I did find and fix a hardware bug in the palette bit. It wasn't apparent in Loadrunner because only a single palette is used for the whole screen. The bug becomes apparent when mixed palettes are used on a single line. The color logic is on a PLD, and I might break that out into 74 series logic. I now support graphics and text modes, mix mode and full screen, and high res graphics. I have the soft switch for low res graphics, but it just shows text right now. I may decide to support low res graphics before sending off for PCB just for completeness. I enrolled in a zero to ASIC course where I'll be designing and building a custom chip. I may use this logic for that purpose to build a custom video chip. For mocking board, I did wire up the C030 speaker and have music working with the speaker. I have a bunch of AY38910 chips and some 6522 vias. I found a schematic online and wired it up on breadboards. I'm hooking it up to the computer now, so no sound as of yet. It looks like there will be some hardware design changes necessary to support it. Uh, Ultima 4 uses the RAM banking to override the interrupt vector uh, and implement its own interrupt handler. This overwritten interrupt handler handler is used to drive the music. I'm using the interrupt handler now for a keyboard and serial. I'm going to have to move the keyboard and serial to NMI to free up the IRQ. For phase 3, soft switch emulation is now close enough. Devices now reside between C100 and C7FF. C000 and C800 to CFFF are now RAM. I write to C000 from my IRQ handler. This way games that read C000 to get keyboard data can work. This is a bit of a hack, but it seems to be working for a bunch of stuff, including Ultima. Ultima 4 doesn't require joystick support, but many other games do. I'm thinking that before committing to PCB, I may want to try and support Atari joystick. We'll see. I'll put this in the bucket with the low res graphics. I'm starting to think about PCB. I had some breakthrough progress here. Big props to Sean Googler, who maintains the U4 remastered A2 GitHub repo. Sean's work here was instrumental in being able to bring this up on my machine. Ultima 4 really consists of a bunch of smaller programs that work together. The game relies heavily on DOS 3.3 and a hack to route commands to DOS to load programs into various regions and run the programs. The game sends Control D and then a DOS command to the Apple II console output ROM routine. There's some hooking so that it doesn't show up on the console but is instead routed to the DOS command line interpreter which executes the command. These commands are mostly B load and B run. 
DOS will load the programs or data files into regions of memory based on these commands. This all happens across four disks. In my case, everything is on an SD card, so I don't need to switch disks. I can just change directories. Ultima 4 relies on the DOS being loaded in the RAM. My DOS is in ROM, so that means I can move stuff into the relatively large region that was occupied by RAM, which is what I've done. I've added functionality to my DOS to bload, brun, fload, and bsave. I then added the same capability to inject these DOS uh, commands through the C out. One tricky bit is that the map data and talk data are read from the disk using lower level Apple II disk routines. I had to rewrite these routines to use the same DOS technique, and I added the new DOS commands to load a subset of a file from some arbitrary offset of an arbitrary length. I have some work to do on the SD card routines. I'm sometimes corrupting the SD card and have to check disk fix. I'm thinking about uh, standing up a FAT32 implementation on Windows to help debug what is happening on the SD card. I went to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo again this year and met lots of cool people. I ran into Rumble Thumps. He gave me one of his Pico computer boards. I think I'll have to put one together. I will most definitely be porting Colossal Cave Adventure to my computer. I really enjoy going to the show and meeting people. I think I might go and visit some of these vintage computer festivals. Maybe I'll bring my computer. This realm has a new Pico project as well. His emulator has support for AY38910, so I'm looking forward to taking a look at that. The 6502 SD and FAT routines were provided by George Foote. He has a GitHub repository with the code. I've extended these routines for my purposes and built a DOS on top of it, but his work was really key. Also, George was very helpful in discussing design options about VGA initially. Shout out to all of the cool people and projects in the R Eater Reddit community. Lots of really cool stuff happening there, including normal users' work with the world's worst VGA card and the Ben Eater kit integration. So many cool projects there. At the PRGE, I sold a bunch of my Badger 6502 Pico boxes and I shut off my eBadger 6502 computer to anyone that would listen. That's the previous version of the 3 rec on PCB that runs Loadrunner with the clunky monochrome video support. While I was there, a few people asked me if I was building a Commander X16 killer. That's not my goal. I'm a fan of the 8 bit guy and I think. David Murray and the X16 community are doing super cool things. I'm supportive and glad to see David building up a PCB assembly capability. I'll be buying one and will be porting software to it. I'm doing what I do now because I enjoy the 8-bit systems and understanding computer design at the hardware level. For me, it's a way to explore and relive the magic of the systems of my childhood. In conclusion, it seems very close. It looks good and it's functional, but there's still a lot of work to do. I'm looking forward to sending off for PCBs. Starting to think about porting Ultima 4 and other games to the Badger 6502 Pico. Richard Garriott created Ultima 4. How cool is this? If you're still watching, thank you.